about 9.17. We're running just a little bit late, but our agenda looks fairly light today, so we won't be able to go through this fairly quickly. But that's Shelly to call the roll. Carla Bezzard? Here. Jeff Bezzard? Here. Jeff Bezzard? Here. Jeff Bezzard? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Julia Coates? Here. Bradley Cobb? Joe Crittenden? Jody Fishinghawk? Meredith Fraley? Here. Janelle Fulbright? Don Garvin? Tana Gloria Jordan? Present. Curtis Now? Here. David Thornton? Kara Cowan Watts? We do have a form. We have a form. I was back up here to do the, uh, and ask uh, Council to soak the do the invocation for us by this. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, prayer of all things, we come to you this morning, Lord, and thank you for this day you've given us, Lord. We thank you for our friends, we thank you for our family, thank you for the relationships that you allow us to have, Lord, and we just pray that you would bless our people, help us to make wise decisions, and we honor you in this name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see anybody in the audience that may be visitors. I think we know everybody out there. We've got kind of a slim crowd this morning. But, uh, Anyway, I need the uh, approval of the minutes for the January 13th regular meeting. I hear a motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same time. Let's jump right into our reports. And Norma, if you want to come forward, and, and I know we have your reports, but uh, it's always good to, to hear your voice and let us know what you've been doing, some of the things you may have forgot to put in there. Well, I, we're coming out of the ice cream situation, and I appreciate all the participation from the council. I know there was a lot of people out there in the field working, and we appreciate that. Uh, we're now kind of, uh, it's like we're going to get to get involved in the economic stimulus planning, which is coming up. So I think that's going to be pretty busy for some of us, but just waiting to get more detail, more direction from the administration on that. Um, other than that, I think my report probably shows that we're we're busy as always, and uh, just always stuff going on. That's uh, and, and I realize more you said more direction and this that and the other, but any idea what parts of the stimulus plan might involve you? Gosh, there's a there's a lot of different areas. I mean, you know, there's money in the housing areas that we get involved in. There's homeless areas, there's uh, uh, building projects, just uh, actually it's, we've just had an introduction that's very broad and the, uh, I may have been signed by now, I don't know what time he was going to sign that, but hopefully we'll get more direction as that comes about. Uh, Melanie's kind of heading that up, so I'd probably defer to her, but right now it's a little overwhelming if you've had a look at it. <laughs> so I think everybody's just getting ready to dig in and figure out what, if there are things that we can do, which is going to be competitive pretty much in nature. But we're going to try to do everything we can to see what we can do to enhance what we're doing. Any more questions for Norman? Right. Yes, okay. on the burial assistance. Yes. For the family, that's the family of the deceased. For example, if there's an elderly person that lives alone, then you're looking at their income guidelines. Well, it'd be just for them if they live alone. So, but once they're deceased, and there's right. But Jerry, do you want to? Yeah, speak we use poverty level income guidelines, and poverty level is based on income for the past. 12 months. Okay. So, so regardless of what the situation but, is. But you would not be looking at the children or right. income or any of that. Okay. Just but if they had a, house. you know, if they had a lot of assets or right. holdings or something like that, and especially if they had a burial policy or life insurance. Okay. And this only applies to those people living within the 14 county area? Yes. <laughs> okay. Mr. Baker, have a question? No, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Anything else for Norma? Norma, just a minute here. <coughs> Curtis Snell was talking to me the other day, and I thought he brought up a real interesting subject. And you want to talk about the markers a little bit, Curtis? Yeah, we had a Harley and I was a cemetery. Are there a way that we could appropriate funds to put little headstones at these grave sites when the, they use the, the burial program? I mean, Jerry talked about it just a little bit there. And, we got a little headstone for our families back a few years ago, and Jerry picked them up, I don't know, somewhere in Muskogee, 
Tell us about things here. Okay, the way we come about that, back several years ago, the tribal council at that point in time made the same type of request, and we put out for bids just a, a grade marker. And, and I forget the exact dimensions. It was like a, a 16, 18 by 11, I believe was the size, of course, 4-inch granite. And uh, we had four or five different monument companies to bid on it. And uh, the company at Muskogee was the one that we ended up with. Uh, well, they were the ones that gave us the most reasonable bid. And I forget exactly, but it, it was something in the ballpark of $85 a piece. And they had the Cherokee Nation seal right in the middle of the, or they could put it any place they wanted to, but they had Cherokee Nation seal. Basically just name, date of birth, and date of death was, was all the room that they had. And uh, at that time, it kind of bottomed out and they didn't pursue it. The thing about it is we can't use BIA money to purchase a monument or a headstone. It would have to come out of tribal funds. And uh, we currently have, uh, who I believe it's uh, 58 or $60,000 in tribal funds for burial, which in the past several years we haven't used because we were able to use all of our BIA money in lieu of tribal money. But now that we have this new contract, $500 of every contracted service we'll make will, will be paid out of tribal out of tribal funds. We're looking at uh, last year we served about uh, 225, 230 families with burial assistance, and uh, we're hoping with this new contract that uh, well. I'd say it, but we're hoping that the numbers will go down because we feel like that we were assisting a lot of families with the old contract that weren't truly indigent tribal families. Because at that point in time, all we used was resources. <coughs> and it's extremely easy for a family to hide resources. Plus, you can't make them liquidate resources. And uh, that's one of the main reasons that we imposed or incorporated the income guidelines in this new contract. But to answer your question, uh, you know, we would have to have tribal funds to to do that. And uh, Mr. with with us using tribal dollars on the burial assistance, is there any way to leverage those dollars to, to get more fed dollars, like we did with Lyheap and some other programs? I mean, I mean, it's obviously going to prove an unmet need and some other things. It actually hinges on what the Bureau of Indian Affairs tells us, that if you have a resource or a like program that uh, you don't need their money to, to operate on. And the only way we can use tribal money and not have it to count as a resource is because they're at a <coughs> and judgment fund. Back when we were first given authorization from the Bureau to administer the burial assistance, the tribal burial assistance portion, if we didn't use some type of, of uh, protected money, it was just counted as a resource. So no matter how much money we put in, we just had to deduct it from what the BIA was given us. And so we went through a lengthy two-year ordeal convincing the Bureau that we were using Railroad judgment money for our tribal burial, and that way it's not counted as a resource. So I don't know if we ever really got down to it to prove that we're using judgment money. I don't know how well we could do that right now, because I'm sure that the judgment fund just goes into gin fund and, and uh, <coughs> our appropriation out of gin fund. So, but to answer your question, no, I don't think it can be done. Uh, Jerry go a step farther. Could, are there a way that we could uh, help the Indian people that has old graveyards out in these cemeteries that's got a rock sitting there? It's been there for years. Now, some people still know who's there, but just the years to come real shortly, nobody would know. If we could have a little headstone, because I don't know how we could make it legal and help the people get them. Why don't you uh, kindly research that and get back to us next meeting? <coughs>
Mr. Snell, that's a monumental task, but we'll certainly give it some thought. You're going to be helping me count those suckers. I've had the same idea on that, but I say maybe we should limit it initially. Those graves say they're 50 years old or more until we see. Well, I don't even know how to respond to that because, you know, I can just think of two or three cemeteries up there in Delaware County, Long Prairie being one of them. And when we bought these monuments for our our family, you know, gee, I don't even know how long they've been gone. But I knew my mom and dad had been putting flowers on those rocks for as far back as I could remember. And if all the cemeteries had some kind of a record, you know, that I know Lone Prairie does, but probably uh, there's a large number of those graves that the rocks have been moved over the years and they're not even markers anymore. Uh, but yes, what, what, you know. What, Mr. Fire, oh, yeah, thank right. you. What the Mr. Snell over there was talking about, where the, what's, where the families actually do know who's right, there, right, and not trying right. to identify others. Exactly. It would be where people would come in and apply for those paper stones. And, and I'm not sure how you can go about, you know, getting a, a ballpark guesstimation of, of, of what we would be dealing with. Excuse me. Um, I don't know much about this, but I do know that in the past, you all appropriated money. There's been money to help refurbish old uh, cemeteries. And that had usually happened through a little cemetery organization, is that correct? Why wouldn't it be their responsibility and why wouldn't it? Is that still, uh, is that still available for them yes. to apply? That when they applied, it would be a part of that package. Uh, and that, you know, they would furnish those accounts and prove who those people were and then I would almost think it would be a community project. Mr. Baker? Yeah, the, on the side note here, this is really confusing, Mr. Snell, Mr. Snell, Mr. Snell. Can we designate one of them as the elder Mr. Snell or something? That's Grandpa. Mr. Angler. Thank you, Mr. And, and Norma's exactly right. That, that's what we did in our district. Uh, we did them as community projects with that uh, cemetery money, mm -hmm. you know, that they did on the refurbishments, different things. So that, and that worked out good because we were able to buy the markers for a lot of them graves that had the little rock sandstone. And it's recently on one of the cemeteries in, uh, in Collinsville, they bought uh, bricks that uh, had their names if they knew who the name was. Like the bricks out here? Yeah, just like the bricks out here. Idea. And they put them on a, uh, on a cap block and, they, and then they silicone that brick down to that cap block and it turned out to be a pretty nice little market deal like that. And, and Most it's inexpensive. It's yeah. Very inexpensive. Was that in Charlie's shop? Charlie, the cemetery. Well, I, I think Norma has an excellent idea. That's why she's if, uh, group, group leader. Here. What we'd like for you to do, like you to do that, Jerry, if you wouldn't mind, get us some quotes on something like what uh, Mr. Anglin talked about and maybe something a little bigger so we have an idea about what we've been no. I, I probably, Rogan will probably shoot me for this, but you know, we do bricks for the uh, Veterans Project, which really, that is frequently their name, and uh, about what you're talking about. And I think we those cost $25, and it may be that uh, I'll have him find out. If, I don't think those people that carve the bricks care what you put on them. Okay. So, we'll look at that, too. Well, I think you made a very good point. Usually, you'll go out there and you find a little metal thing, and the name lasts is probably two years, maybe three years, and it's gone, so it's gone. If you would find out maybe the cost on that, the next week, we'll get you All right, thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, Mr. Snell, I'm sorry. Uh, 
Okay, Charlie Stoke, Community Services. Charlie, you want to come up and give us some highlights of your program there? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I think y'all already got our report, which is quite lengthy, uh, much more information on here than we usually submit. So uh, if you have any questions on this, I'll take questions for now. Mr. Baker, uh, Charlie, on our uh, sitcoms, how, how is that going right now? I think it's going good, Bill. Okay. I would say it's going good. So we're taking more applications and, and uh, uh, I mean, have we really started constructing any? There, as you can see, there's probably about uh, 2,700 constructions right now, and then we're getting ready to kick off 28 more. And then, if we purchase land, if we're in the process of purchasing land, we're getting ready to kick off some more. Can yeah. you have somebody in your department maybe send over to Gail the ones in, the, uh, in in all the counties and driving directions or something like that, so that of, of where these homes are at? So that uh, Joe can drive down to wherever it is and uh, you mean still it under construction now. Uh huh. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and you know, I'll, if if there's ones in Cherokee County, I'd like to know so I could drive out and take a look and check on progress. I thought you meant for all the cases. Yeah, send send it to Gail so she can send it to everybody and then they can uh, peruse those ones that they're interested in. Okay. No problem. And that way we, we know where they're they're at. It's not uh, and it's something that we can check on and and all. But uh, we do kind of that can help probably. We can do that. Yeah, well, that would be good. And I'll just uh, a little information here. I was looking at a home the other day. I'm thinking of a rehab home. It's a little uh, two bedroom house. Uh, and the guy told me it was about eighty five thousand dollars. It really looked good. I know you don't have anything to do with rehab, Charlie. But but that is, that is not looking home. The other thing, Charlie, I did have a couple of questions. Oh, on the, uh, when you do the uh, picking of those homes, do you take into consideration if, if someone has got an application there and then the land is ready to go, there's no problems with it, do they get points for that or do you know how that's worked out? process we take them through, yeah. So, so they have to get processed. So, I've noticed on the list that uh, Beverly has sent out to us, there's about six or eight homes on there that are just sitting there, nothing being done, because one of them didn't have an easement to the house. Some of them, the deeds weren't right. Uh, you couldn't have access to the house. And, and those people are going to be six months or a year before that thing is cleared up, and we can have six more people that are ready to build, you know, if they got clear deeds. Some of them had water, has sewer already that's, uh, that's ready to hook on to. Yeah, well, and that's one of the law that's on a project. What we do is we try to work through the process to get them through where they will be on the house. I think it'd be disappointing to have someone saying that you're on the list and then something happens, they take them off, sit somebody else in there. You'll probably be hearing about that situation. But I think uh, the one you're talking about that's been sitting there uh, in Adair County is we finally got an easement uh, last week I think we uh, got the easement worked out and I think Jill and the family Jack Christie and, and the other family there they uh, went over to a, another uh, piece of property and the family gave an easement for us to go in and construct the home so that's been taken care of okay. uh, I had another question here Charlie is on the community gardens uh, are we doing that or are we going out and plowing the gardens up that one yeah we're taking applications and then uh, we also have a tractor and uh, plows and uh, we have uh, people transporting the tractor and uh, implements that go with it, and we are plowing gardens. Yeah. But I think it's going to kind of get a little more participation this this, this year because more people are uh, talking about it, and, uh, interested in participating more. So, is that the tractor that that, that you guys that we bought three right. years ago? Yeah. And then I have one more question: Is and. It's on the IHS deficiency list. Do you know off the top of your head what those uh, <coughs> projects probably requested funding for? Uh, Do we what now? On the, the IHS deficiency list, uh, and that's where Billy Hicks puts into the water and sewer. They'll put in for projects every year. Do you know what projects those were? Uh, not right off the bat. I can get with Billy and ask him. Billy okay. probably has a list. Yeah, if you would, I'd like to see yeah. what we put in for this fund for this next fiscal year. Yeah. Any more questions for Charlie? Thank you, Charlie. You're welcome. You have a good day. Thank you.
Okay. At the last meeting, someone asked about the FEMA trailers. Uh, just an update. We've gotten 11 out of the 12. That 12th one passed the formaldehyde test, but they found mold in it. So we're not going to take it. They're going to give us a bit. Uh, so that's kind of the status of it. Uh, the ice storm, uh, my latest update is just through the 5th. I don't have last week, uh, but it was compared to the other ice storms. This one wasn't nearly as bad as far as the calls we've gotten, and I think it's because it's not as widespread. We were expecting some more last week once the electric come on over there, but I don't know how many they got. But we'd only gotten about 30 calls through the 5th, and about half of those were just information calls or uh, referred to the Ameren Insurance or something of that nature. Uh, I passed out the paving list for that money that was appropriated just recently. Uh, that's the one we're going to start with. Uh, Michael Lynn, uh, he's going to con be contacting the county commissioners and working with them uh, to get them involved on that. Uh, we do intend to do the following. Uh, as soon as we got money available, do the, the other projects that's on that uh, entire list. I think there was a total of 25 or something of that nature. Also passed out a uh, letter that was sent to the community shield folks. We did get our uh, premium lined out last uh, week. Uh, the frame homes are going up to 370 per year, uh, which is a $2 a month increase uh, on that uh, frame homes. Mobile homes went up $3.42 a month to 465. And we were pretty fortunate that it wasn't more than that. Uh, <coughs> The losses were substantially higher than what our premium was, but this is a risk pool. So over, overall, the Ameren did well in the program, so uh, we were lucky there. It didn't go up more than that. Uh, but that's, uh, that's kind of the, the update on that deal. David, what, what's the uh, parameters for getting on this Ameren list? What, what That'll be Cherokee. Okay. Your income has to be less than 80% of the national median income. What is income base? Uh, has to be within the 14 counties, and the uh, uh, house has to be approved by them. We go out and we take pictures, submit all that, and if it's in poor shape, they won't insure it. And they've gotten, they've actually gotten more strict uh, in the last uh, year than they were before. So, okay. <coughs> 2,320 2, families on the program, the program right now. Uh, just uh, how you, Mr. Baker asked uh, about the stimulus, and I'll tell you what I know about it. In the, in the HASDA programs, there's $510 million. Half of it will be distributed through the formula, which uh, Marvin's projecting 10 to $11 million for Cherokee through the formula. The other half is competitive. And... Uh, The criteria is kind of new construction, acquisition, rehabilitation, including energy efficiency and conservation, and infrastructure development. That's kind of their, what they're looking for these projects to be. Uh, I'm sure as soon as a, a list of things that's going to be applied for mm -hmm. uh, will be made available to you all, but that's going to be through Melody. Uh, but uh, the... the, the, the uh, Final bill that came out, it did put some parameters. The uh, money has to be obligated within a year uh, of the today, I, I'm assuming. Uh, so we do have some parameters there. The, the the competitive awards won't be made until September. So after that, a year from from whenever those awards are made on the competitive side. So give us that list again. It was. Uh, energy efficient, new, new construction, acquisition, rehabilitation, including energy efficiency and conservation and infrastructure development. Uh, Ms. Councilor Watts had a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, will that include money to potentially retrofit some of our um, government buildings, or will it just be private residential homes or our senior housing and those things? Uh, we, we know senior housing and uh, Units, apartments, uh, homes that we own, even rehab. <coughs> I don't know about the government buildings with this pot of money. But okay, so will we be, well, are we already poised and we've got a plan on how we're going to compete for that? Because I think there's a huge ability. I mean, we have 
Yeah, we're, we're we've been, we had meetings last week, uh, but like I said, we had a meeting on Thursday. Got the final language on Friday morning. Right. It was different than what we'd worked on Thursday. So. So we'll enter our monies on the already set aside for Indian housing and under the formula what we'll get. Mm -hmm. You said indicated to me. Will we also be able to? Will we also be required? to do energy sustainability uh, in those packages, or is it just? What's required and what's suggested at this point, uh, we're just shooting in the, the dark until HUD comes out with some, some instructions on what's required. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're looking. I mean, that's going to be, a, that's that's the big well, key right even now. Even if we're not required that we would go down a sustainable right. route, so. Uh, and and uh, I know uh, it's already been suggested that at some point we kind of get with you and somebody else. I can't remember who it was because y'all are uh, into the, the green. Uh, uh, I've been from Tom Elkins' show. Yeah, Tom Elkins and Jack Farmer and Todd Inlow and Melanie Knight and Greg Simmons. Um, and then, of course, the businesses. Mm -hmm. I think that that needs to be a priority for us, whether it's required or not. Because it pays itself back. <clears throat> right. Right. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Chair. Thank you, uh, Ms. Jordan. David, on the time limit, does that when you say one year to obligate money, does that mean completed project? Or no, no, no. That's just the uh, obligation just to is uh, we got a contract on it. Okay. Mr. Baker, uh, and I can assume that we can hit the ground running with all the deferred maintenance on our uh, low rent housing and. And we've got, Looking at that, we've yes. got units that have needed windows for 15 years. Yep. Yep. And, uh, uh, and that's, we, that's the priority. Now, we've already started two or three projects and finished one or two, but uh, we got a major one coming in. Uh, major bid coming out in the next 30 days for prior. Okay. That's a huge one. And you've got you know, water problems down by uh, the main complex, uh, the drainage problems and stuff. Uh, Fox so, Street? Uh, behind your old office. Oh, back there? Yeah. That's not really mine. Oh. Uh, no. It's housing for me. The creek? Well, not the creek, but remember the lady that couldn't get to her house in the wheelchair because... What was it? That was at Fox Street. Oh, was it Fox yeah. Street? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I misspoke then. I was thinking it was... Uh, we have uh, two or three uh, uh, additions that need some road work. Right. Uh, I think Forum, Forum went to their city to, to do that. They wouldn't have a nickel to, to go fix those streets, but we're looking at that one. Uh, the one up here at Tahlequah, we're trying to get uh, worked up with Mr. Corn to fix it. Then somewhere else. I'm really to catch okay. But anyway, it would appear to me that you would have a lot of... Uh, Really good projects. Yeah, we've we've had discussions on, on how much how much paint you could actually put on a piece of sheetrock before it fell off the seat. Yeah, you know, and you're probably <laughs> going to find out before long. Yeah, right. I mean, I think you're getting there, but uh, well, those are some of the discussions. But they're good, you know, they're good projects. I mean, they're and and with a, a remodel, they'd be good for another 20 years. Well, also, you know, we do have two or three places we need to look at and see if you know, do we really want to continue, yeah. do, do we want to get rid of them, uh, okay. but yes, those discussions are being had. Ms. Jordan. Uh, David, on the infrastructure, could that possibly also include that uh, repair of that water line going up towards Lowry and Oaks? Uh, the one that, uh, real water district number three, mm -hmm. yeah. It could it possibly could include yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I really think that we'll get moving on that water line before that even this short. But it's something that needs to be done fairly quickly. Yeah, I think if we can get some self help on it, I think they can find some money to do it with. And where they need to the repair, they're losing like, is either five or six thousand a month. There's, there's a lot. Water loss. And that really needs to be done, you know, now. So. Any more questions for uh, Mr. Stubborn? Yeah, you now. Back to the FEMA trailers. Mm -hmm. Are they all spoken for and plan to cut someone already that you plan to give them to? Yes. Now, we did do a bid on some more trailers uh, just recently, but we rejected it. It was just it was just too much, and they're rebidding it. I mean, this, but I think they probably got families identified for those. Well, I have a single gentleman who is <laughs> homeless, and uh, do we ever let? 
Does one person have a trailer? Uh, yeah. In, uh, under the Haas, the definition of uh, family is a single person. It includes single person. Thank you. Janelle, I want to apologize to you. I had your name down first, and you were the last to get the talk. So okay. I apologize to you. All right. Any more questions for Mr. Sullivan? For the court, David. Thank you. I'm looking on down the agenda <clears throat> for old business. I see none pending. Under new business, uh, we do have uh, some discussion and possible action about the Housing Authority Advisory Board members. Uh, we have any discussion that we want to talk about on this today? Uh, I know Ms. Moore, you brought this up and, and we put it off till today. And I've asked the administration to go back and research some of that. I haven't heard from anybody. Uh, it's probably my fault. I didn't follow up to, to get an answer for it, but uh, I want to put it out there for discussion today. Uh, I, I would certainly encourage this group to go ahead and appoint uh, individuals from within our group so that we could get a report back on a regular basis, kind of what we think, how we think we could maybe help the housing authority a little bit. I would imagine, <coughs> looking at some of the other advisory board uh, positions, there's usually three people on those boards that uh, go to the advisory positions on the board. So, uh, not knowing uh, any more things about it, uh, I take it that we did have an advisory board in the past. Uh, we did have. Uh, do I hear a nomination? Or do I hear a recommendation to uh, to establish an advisory board member? Is this just a motion to establish? Yeah, to establish three one, positions. and then we'll ask. I, I make that motion. Okay. The motion's been made one to establish an advisory board member to the Housing Authority. Do I hear a second on that motion? Yes, sir. Snail, second. Okay, and I think probably what we would do is go ahead and, and look at three people to be on the advisory board. So do I hear any not? Let me ask this way. What about the people here that want to serve on that board? Hold your hand up, and we'll go from there. Oh, pardon, I need to back up a little bit. On the motion that was made for the housing board advisory board, do I hear a motion? a motion to approve? Right. To approve having the board. Having right. the board for the housing board. Everybody in favor? Right. Right. Yeah, all in favor say aye. Right. Any opposed, same sign. Thank you, so. Okay, now we're back uh, to looking for... Do it sit Now we're back to looking for uh, uh, members to serve on that advisory board. I'd like to see a show of hands of people that would be... Willing to serve on that board and could. Uh, two there, uh, Ms. Jordan and uh, Mr. Crittenden. And Curtis Snail. I'll move to approve the three that raise their hands. Second. Okay, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. We do, we do have one situation. Uh, the meeting is tonight at the same time as our council meeting. But I don't think it's normally that way, is it? No, it's the always on Monday, ours is always on Tuesday. Okay. okay. And we tried to get them rescheduled, but they, they was a complete conflict, and that was the only night that they could Okay. Well, I guess you'll just have to miss that meeting tonight. And then sure we start the next, the next month. month. Yes. Okay. 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 Let's take a look. The hey, announcement, the next tentative uh, meeting is scheduled for March 17th at 9 a.m. Uh, anybody have any announcements they want to make? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same time. Thank you.